Hello and welcome to the channel. I'm on and today we'll review the debut album by the American pop singer Billie Eilish. When we all fall asleep, where do we go? I've yet to look it up. Now it's the first album, like I said, it was um, recorded in a long ass time. She recorded this from May uh, 2016 up until January of 2019. So she took a long ass time to make this record, three years. But she did make something, um, she did make something very interesting here. And I will say that, um, you know, I am pretty impressed that Bid Arch can make such a thing while she was, I believe, 17 at the time. I'm not exactly sure, but I think that's her age. Her age. Her age, there you go. Uh, we have the opening track, which is basically just a, you know, um, a lot of explanation marks um, with a really weird intro where she's saying, I've taken all my Invisalign, and she's like laughing with Phineas, her, her brother, who writes, I believe, most of her songs. All tracks are written by Billie Eilish O'Connell. Is that? Billie Eilish O'Connell, that's a long ass name, Jesus. She's 18 now. She was, I believe, 17 when the album came out. And Phineas O'Connell. Except for no, that all tracks are produced by Phineas O'Connell. Oh, so according to uh, to this Wikipedia page, the only songs that Phineas wrote it were When the Party's Over and My Strange Addiction, which are two of my favorite songs of the album. You know, I have this whole debate with my, one other fan that keeps saying, oh, Phineas keeps writing all the catchy bits for her and all, oh, he is the talented guy. But you know, I went to his page on Rachel Music and I saw his ratings and they were lower than Billy's. So, I'm not sure what that's all about, but you know, maybe that's because Billy just has a more, you know, wider appeal to say the least. So I don't know what was that all about. I would say shut the fuck up, enjoy Billy Eilish or get the fuck out. Don't, I just kind of hate whatever he does, uh, you know, shitting on this whole thing. You know, you can just either enjoy it or just walk away. But that's, you know, that's a whole other thing for a whole other day. Yeah, so the Invisalign thing, you know, it's a funny thing to open up the album, kind of polar, kind of, you know, a weird way, but it is a way. Then we have Bad Guy, of course, which is a breakout uh, hit. I went onto Spotify and the song has 1.2 billion streams. So, yeah, you can say that Billie Eilish is quite the, you know, the mega star. She, like, she doesn't even have to make another album and she can already, like, you know, take it to the bank. She can, like, go, um... How do you say that? Uh, she could just take it to the bank, you know, she's just done. But I think she's gonna make more good music like this, so. A uh, bad guy, you know, you know it, you've heard it, you can't really avoid the song. It's, um, I thought, at first I thought it was kind of generic, but now I've grown to like it. I really like it now, so. I just like how dark and kind of uh, avant-garde this album sounds. I do like the, the tone of the album a lot. Not, not as necessarily the biggest fan of the production, but I do like uh, how the album sounds, for the most part. Uh. Then we have Xeni, which is basically the same song, I would say, but it's just a bit more sinister, maybe. Which is not a subject matter, but, you know, it's basically the same song, but... Um, she kind of wrote it differently, as in the lyrics. You should see me in a crown. Um, she's kind of acknowledging her, her own, like well-being and just kind of like pulse checking if you know if she's still aware of who she is and shit like that uh that's how thing was going on there kind of an egotistical song she's kind of like um flexing on here but that's not necessarily a bad thing because i think she does deserve it uh now you know maybe at that point so so you know who knows but i think now she she does deserve it so you know Flex off, you deserve it, you have talent, so there you go. Might as well show it off. All the good girl all the good girls go to hell. I think this was one of my favorite songs. This one is uh, kind of quirky, kind of like uh, all over the place in a fun way. Uh, lyrics are pretty cheeky. 
Um, the songwriting is pretty interesting, pretty compelling. Uh, the production can sometimes kind of blur out to me. It can kind of sometimes drown out the song. Sometimes the the beats are a bit too too hard hitting or a bit too fuzzy. You know, they 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 are a bit too highly mixed. I would say, as in they come out too much in the speakers, in the headphones. They blare out a bit too much. So that's 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 the major. That's my that's the major flaw of the album. That the that's the the beats kind of the production kind of like uh, drowns out the whole album, which is kind of the problem here. But that's you know that is a problem, and you know the songwriting can be better. But you know it's her first album. She was seventeen, I believe, when this came out. So it's still really impressive though for what she did. But I think she can improve, uh, you know, from this album. So there you go. Uh, Wish you were gay it was really funny. Uh, this is the first song written by Phoenix O'Connell, according to Wikipedia. I'm not saying it is like that. Well, I just kind of did, but that's what it says. There you go. So, or maybe they mean Phoenix wrote it the whole album, um, or they, they wrote it together in part, and if, uh, these are the only two songs Phineas fully wrote it. That's probably what they mean. I think that's what they mean. I don't know. Um, so when the party is over, or um, yeah, 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 wish you were gay and when the party is over. Uh, really fun songs, really cheeky again, I like the lyrical department a lot. Uh, the songs are a bit better produced, they are a bit more well-rounded, I would say, a bit more, more flushed out. Or, uh, do you say it like that? They are a bit more fleshed out, I think, I think that's how you say it. I do really like that, uh, songwriting gets better, uh, wish you were gay, really, like, Funny as fuck, I, I think at least, uh, leave me alone. Um, what else do you have? Um, yeah, yeah, I wish we were getting when the party's over, two of my favorite songs. Uh, then we got Eight, which was kind of a, you know, kind of a, um, a whatever song to me. The song was kind of meh. Was not a huge fan of this one. It, uh, it was one of those songs that kind of blared out a bit too much, a bit too, you know, forgettable, I think, because it's in between the songs. In between two songs that are a bit more grandiose, I would say, a bit more, you know, stand out because they were fully written by Phineas, but that's kind of it, actually. It's kind of it, honestly. Then we got My Strange Addiction, which is um, a very kind of trippy song. This one is a bit more psychedelic, a bit more psychedelic broke pop in a way. Uh, not too much, it's still kind of like avant garde pop, like Wikipedia labels the album, which, you know, so so, but, you know, whatever. Um, yeah, but My Strange Addiction is a good one. I really like this tune. I think it's uh, very inventive. I think it's uh, it's a fun song. Um, it's very creatively written, and you know it's another uh, plus mark to the to the album. Bury your friends of dark as fuck. This is probably one of my favorites. I love the the lyrical departments. I love the uh, the bury your friends refrain. Um, yeah, I love the song, man. This is a really good one. I really like it. Um, Elo Mo. Elo Milo or something. I don't really remember this song, so I might call this at least fair because this was really forgettable. It's only two and a half minutes long. Uh, it's K okay, or it's it's in between two two songs that I really like. So don't really rem remember this one. I don't think it's a terrible song, but you know I don't remember it. So whatever. Listen before I go. You know uh, these are kind of the last three songs uh, where she's kind of already waving goodbye. She's already, uh, you know, doing her stand. Um, yeah, and this is a very emotional, very Eclipse-esque kind of song. I really like it because of that. I think you should give it a chance if, if you haven't already. And um, yeah, I think it's, um, you know, it's pretty good. I like it, so it's, uh, it's a plus in my book. Uh, I love you. Very straightforward, very, you know, uh, on the nose right there. Uh, not a lot to say there, she's just kind of expressing her love. I was kind of hoping that Ocean Eyes was on there, but it's it's not. Uh, but this is probably the song that sounds the most like that, or Bury a Friend, or When the Party's Over, songs like that. That's probably why I like those songs the most, because Ocean Eyes is my favorite to be the other song. And I thought it was on this album, but it, it's not. It's, it's like a separate single, I think. Or it is, so there you go. Um, and Goodbye, well, pretty self-explanatory, pretty like... Uh, Eerie kind of dark tone to close the album. That's my review of the album. I would give it a 7.8 out of 10. And I'll see you in the next video. Peace.